Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about something called negative remainders. Negative remainders might sound weird at first because of course most of us are used to positive remainders. Let's take a look at how negative remainders might work. And let's do that with an example. Say we're talking about 7 and 57. We know that 7 goes into 57 8 times. So times 8, and that's 56, and then there's a remainder of plus 1. But we could also think of this as 7 going into the next multiple of 7, so that would be 7 times 9, which is 63, and now we can think of that as having a remainder going the other way, and in this case that would be negative 6. So think of negative remainders as sort of overshooting the number and then going back. And the thing to notice that's going to be important in this lesson is that the negative remainder and the positive remainder, if we got rid of the negative sign, add up to the divisor. So that means if there was a so that means, say the divisor were 5, a negative remainder of 3 would mean a positive remainder of 2. 2 and 3 is 5. So keep that in mind. Let's look at an example of how we can find a remainder using this concept. Say you were asked to find the remainder when 129 times 130 times 131, that whole number, whatever that is, we're divided by 11, we want the remainder. Let's first do this where we find the positive remainder, and then let's look how doing it with negative remainders actually makes things easier. Now, we can see that these three numbers are going up by one each time, and that's gonna be significant. Let's just start with 11 going into 129. You may remember that 11 times 11 is 121. So 11 goes into 129 11 times with a remainder of 8, right? Because we have to now add an 8 to this to get 129. So the remainder when 11 divides into 129 is 8. That means the remainder when 11 goes into 130 is going to be 9. And when it goes into 131, the remainder is going to be 10. That means 129 times 130 times 131 divided by 11 is going to equal... 129 is 11 times 11 plus that remainder of 8. That's 129. 130 is 11 times 11 plus 9. And 131 is 11 times 11 plus 10. All divided by 11. Now, you may be able to see or remember from the binomial theorem that when you multiply these three things together, you're going to get a bunch of terms. And the last term is going to consist of 8 times 9 times 10. Every other term will have one of these multiplied in it, and therefore will be divisible by 11. That means the remainder of this number, which remember is the original number we're interested in, will be the part of that expansion of the binomial theorem in the last term, it, the, the part that is the last term. So that's going to be 8 times 9 times 10. That's going to be the last part that's not divisible by 11 or that we know that we're not sure is divisible by 11 because the rest is. So that over 11. Now, this is not the remainder because that's a big number that 11 does go into more. And 8 times 9 times 10 is 720, so let's bring that over here. 
So now we have 720 over 11. 11 is going to go into that more times. More specifically, if you divide 11 into 720, you're going to get 65. So 720 is 11 times 65, and you're going to see that there is a remainder of 5. So that tells us the remainder is 5. Now let's do that using negative exponents, and we're going to see that that gives us an easier number at the end here. We're not going to have to deal with that division. So the problem was 129 times 130 times 131 over 11. We got that 11 goes into 129 uh, with a remainder of 8. Now that implies that 11 will multiply by the next highest number, which is 12. But we can just call it A. We don't really care what that multiplier is. The important thing is that when there was a remainder of positive 8, remember from what I said at the beginning of this video, that implies a remainder of negative 3 for the next highest multiple. Remember the 8 and the 3 add to the 11. So we can say that we have a negative remainder of 3. So what I'm doing is I'm rewriting 129 now as 11 times some number minus 3. Okay, so that's 129. And then I'm going to use the same logic for 130. 130 had a positive remainder of 9, which implies a negative remainder of 2. So 130 is 11 times that number with a negative remainder. Then 131 had a positive remainder of 10, implying a negative remainder of 1, and we have 11 times some number minus 1, all over 11. Now, same logic as before. When we multiply these all out, we're going to get a bunch of terms, and then the last term will be the only one that we don't know for sure is divisible by 11, and that's going to be negative 3, times negative 2 times negative 1, right? That consists of just these last terms multiplied together. Now, does 11 go into that? Well, we can see this is a smaller number than that 720 we had before. We get negative 3 times negative 2 is 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. All right, so 11 doesn't go into that, so that's just our remainder. But a negative 6 remainder implies a positive 5 remainder because 5 and 6 is 11. And recall that that's what we got the first time. So these answers match. So when the positive remainders are big, like this, negative remainders can save you some long calculations by helping you to use lower numbers. All right. I'll see you in the next video.